safari, beach, or a flight in a hot air balloon, we can travel around the world via virtual reality. It's better for the environment and affordable, but just how fun are VR trips? Our topic on Shift. The idea sounds great. Just pop on a VR headset and off you go. To any place in the world or even to distant planets. VR tourism may be a niche product for now, but virtual vacation is on the rise. The VR travel market is forecast to explode from over 4.5 billion euros to five times that figure by 2027. About one fifth of people surveyed in Germany think the future of travel lies in the metaverse. And even one fourth of respondents under 30 fear VR trips are a viable possibility. But what's already possible today? I gave VR travel a try. Whether paragliding over the Himalayas, Sledding in Sweden or snorkeling in Mexico, VR can take us anywhere. In just a few clicks, you're whisked away from your couch to some faraway destination. Travel agencies promote chill vacation vibes without the CO2 emissions or the high costs. You can buy your own interactive travel experience for as little as 10 euros in the App Store. Some are even free of charge. The agencies offer them to promote their destinations and attractions. VR technology can help you plan a trip. Is your room big enough? How far away is the beach? Or you can even go on a whole trip from the comfort of your home. For an immersive experience, you need a good VR headset. There are models with no display, but use your smartphone instead. Cheap ones go for about 100 euros. VR headsets with a built-in display are a bit more expensive. MetaQuest is a real hit and has a price tag of 450 euros. But that's still a lot cheaper than going on a real trip. Let's crunch some numbers. Say I fly from Germany to Vietnam in winter. My round-trip ticket might cost 850 euro. In the process, more than 3.5 tons of CO2 are emitted per traveler on the approximately 24,000 kilometers of flight. VR may be a great alternative for people who are unable to travel to places because of physical restrictions. But for now, virtual traveling can't quite compete with taking real vacation. VR headsets can't stimulate the sense of taste, smell or feel. But there are haptic vests available for consumer use now. VR traveling does away with nuisances like big crowds, waiting in lines and jet lag. And you might try a few daring activities you wouldn't be comfortable with in real life. Like taking off in a hot air balloon or whitewater rafting. I noticed the deeper I dove into different worlds, the more realistic the experience felt. Experts call this immersion. But what happens in our brains when images and sounds fuse to create a virtual reality experience? A crucial point is that our minds treat information in a VR world just like stimuli in the real world. And that can trigger real emotions. But the effectiveness depends on a few other factors. How exciting is the story? How sophisticated is the technology? High resolution images and a good refresh rate ensure images aren't choppy or pixelated. Frank Steinticke from the University of Hamburg is convinced a great VR experience depends mostly on the hardware used. He's a VR expert researching human-computer interaction and he studies how real VR experiences seem to us. We have two displays in front of the user's eyes. Then the data is transmitted via the optic nerve back to the visual cortex. And from there, depending on whether they recognize or want to grasp the objects, this information is spread across the brain via neurons. In other words, images and noises from the virtual world are processed similarly to information in real life. We collect most of our information using our eyes, and our visual perception also simulates our other senses. That's good news for VR users because they may only be seeing images, yet they take in the virtual worlds like real experiences. 
Im Wesentlichen passiert fast das Gleiche. Was Basically, auch almost the same thing happens as in real life. We collect information using our senses, except in a virtual world shown on a computer display. And we hear the 3D sound and process the information in almost the same way as in reality. Each person perceives these virtual worlds differently, and it depends on the VR's quality too. Users can feel emotions like joy or fear, just like in real life. It's similar to watching a scary movie or reading a thrilling story. But VR has one advantage. You're immersed in the sights and sounds of a virtual world, making it more real. How real an experience seems largely depends on the technology you use and the way the virtual world is displayed. As soon as you think you're really in that world and you feel present, you kind of fool your brain. How realistic VR feels depends on many factors. Even minor hiccups, like a bad internet connection, can spoil the illusion and your experience. For now, users are aware that they're in a virtual world from wearing a headset. That makes it hard to completely zone out reality, but that may change in the future. These headsets are still pretty big and heavy, and rather clunky. It's like wearing heavy ski goggles. But we see the next generation of these devices shrinking in size, to be more like sunglasses, for instance. If you want to time travel right now, you need a VR headset. A pair of sunglasses won't cut it. But you can jump back in time to the past and visit cities like London, Budapest or Vienna. In this guided tour, visitors can go back in time right where they're standing. But you need a versatile team to make VR worlds as realistic as possible. I met with historians, 3D artists and VR animators in Cologne. You can take a trip to the 20th century through virtual reality. Time Ride brings the past to life. The team uses film clips, sound recordings, and photos to rebuild the world the way it used to be. How exactly did the buildings and vehicles look? The research department at Time Ride compiles information to create a city map. 3D artists then use the map to conjure up the virtual world. Its details are accurately simulated in VR. But what's more important than the buildings are the animated figures. The more realistic they look, the better the experience. So the 10 3D developers conduct meticulous research. What did people wear back then? How well fed were they? Who was out and about? To make them look as realistic as possible, the animated figures' clothes are recreated using patterns, and the people themselves are designed with great care. We sit on bench out. How does a person look? Short hair? Long hair? How long is their nose? Is their hair like this or like that? And so on. And then we put that all together. An animator brings the finished 3D figures to life and uses a motion capture suit to record his movements. First we calibrate it. To calibrate the suit, he uses markers that map his body's position and orientation. Then his physical movements animate the figure's digital motions. It takes the 20-person team about three months to create one of the historical worlds. And these worlds even draw in international visitors. Places like Brandenburg Gate are known across the globe, but the stories surrounding them aren't always. Defining points in history like the end of World War II or the fall of the Berlin Wall appeal to a broad, international audience. Time travelers can now immerse themselves in this history, and sometimes even directly compare then and now. A trip through time can help us better understand how life used to be, because the travelers become part of the action. VR can replace a real trip help prepare for one or provide a whole new experience altogether, like in this tour through the German capital. This is Potsdamer Platz in Berlin today and in 1920. In this guided tour, visitors go back in time right where they are. While a historian talks about how Berliners used to live. 
She shows them Germany's first traffic light. Here, visitors get to step into historical Berlin. On a virtual trip, they're sure to remember. You can take virtual visits to ancient cultural sites too, and experience Rome in its golden age, or tour the famous Baalbek Temple complex in Lebanon, all thanks to VR. Whether for going on trips, use in school or at a university, good VR technology enables users to take part in events, creating a unique experience they won't forget. VR technology helps people learn visually. Users can explore historical settings, for instance, making history more alive and tangible. Studies have shown that students who use virtual and augmented reality take greater interest in learning, they perform better academically than others studying with conventional methods. The VR learning market is forecast to grow from 6 billion euros in 2021 to 32 billion in 2026. VR broadens horizons. Museums like the MoMA in New York or the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam have free VR tours. You can also take a virtual visit to the Stadel Museum in Frankfurt. It's one of Germany's oldest museums. The collection has been constantly changing since 1816. Using a VR headset, you can watch the art and the museum itself change throughout time. I think this sounds quite exciting. Virtual reality offers so many possibilities. How will this influence our travel plans? I do think VR has the potential to change tourism, but I don't really think it will replace traveling altogether. But it gives you the opportunity to plan trips, for instance. Like, is this the right hotel for me? Do I want to go to that restaurant? And I think VR gives us a thrilling opportunity to have these experiences a bit in advance, or to preserve them by visiting exciting places again, virtually. VR travel could become a good alternative to conventional travel, also to help protect the climate. What do you think? Are you going to keep packing your bags or would a headset suffice? Let us know. That's it from me today. See you next time and bye for now. Mm -hmm.